questions or just whatever. So please welcome Pablo. Thank you. Hey guys, one second. All right. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about building micro apps. Um, devs, raise your hands. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to do a quick intro. One sec. Need to connect. All right. So, quick overview who I am. I'm Pablo. I built. I started using Nostr like um, eight months ago or so, but during December I started using Nostr like a lot. I stopped using Twitter and started using this. And I got just fell in love with the protocol, all the stuff that it allows you to do, um, how simple it is. I love how the, the defaults of Nostr allow you to, to build apps. So usually when you're building an, an app, the default is that it doesn't work. And then you need to do like synchronization, for example. You need to do heavy lifting to make it work. But because Nostr uses uh, WebSockets as a, as a way to communicate, you get like all these beautiful synchronizations by default. Uh, the first time I, I wrote um, like a test application, and I noticed that I was changing my profile in the thing that I was making, and it was updating automatically on Damos. I was like, what the? What happened? <laughs> it's absolutely insane. I wrote something in five minutes. And it synchronizes with this other app and with all the other apps. It's absolutely insane. So I started building a bunch of things. Um, I built Godnoster, which was kind of like, uh, I, it's a very simple way of saying, instead of reading aloud your NPAD on a podcast, you say Godnoster slash Pablo. So I thought it was a good idea. I think kinda, it's kind of stupid now. Uh, then I built Ananoster. It's like a Craigslist uh, type site on Noster. Uh, Nostri chat, chat widget, uh, SAP life is like a feed of SAPs that are going on. It's kind of cool. And yeah, just a bunch of stuff. Um, and I started building all these in like, my spare time. So the thing is that you can build stuff really quickly. And I'm super pumped on, on building these small apps that are immediately useful. You don't have to build for weeks or months to get something that someone can use. You literally can build them. Like SAP Life, there's a lot of people using that, and I literally built I put my daughter to bed one night, and I went to bed, and it was live. So it's absolutely insane. All right. Um, I should probably talk about what micro apps are. Yes. <laughs> so micro apps, the, the idea is it's this very, very simple app that is doing one thing right. It doesn't try to do a bunch of different things. It's not, maybe it doesn't have a way to register to create an NPUB. Maybe it doesn't have a way to set up a profile. There are, because it's an open protocol, we should not have to replicate the idea of creating a profile in a shitty way on every single uh, Nostr app. We can just have one app that is really good at on onboarding people. Uh, you don't have to upload your picture on Damos and Amethyst and every single on Snort and everything. Else. We can just have one app or a million apps doing that one thing really well. Uh, and that, that, uh, that allows you a, a, a degree of experimentation that I think is so cool, right? Because you want to build these really weird, really strange, creative UX on how to do onboarding, and you can just go with it. You know, whereas if you build it within Snort, where there's a lot of people using it, um, it, it has to work. You, you cannot be as creative. You have to be a little bit more conservative because people are already using it, right? Um, oh, yeah. I can barely see the screen. So the, um, what, what's cool about building um, micro apps is this, um, this uh, thing that in, in software, complexity grows geometrically, right? So you have one feature in one app, and it's very simple. It's a very simple code base. You can get away with the code base sucks completely. Uh, you can get away with a lot of things. But you have a second feature, and you pay a price, right? Because you build fast, and now you're paying the price. And you build a third feature, and 
it becomes more and more and more complex. With micro apps, it doesn't really matter. Like you can you can do take all the shortcuts that you want. Um, I have a friend that's ha making changes to some of the micro apps that I did, and he's like, "Why? Why is this this way? What?" Like, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I didn't feel. I just copy and pasted the code. Like I didn't care. You know, it's like it doesn't matter because the complexity is still so low. Even if it's shitty, the complexity is so low that." Anybody can understand it, so for the most part. Uh, you know, you might be wondering, is this on purpose? And probably the answer is no. Um, so yeah, you can build fast. Um, the other thing that I think is absolutely uh, uh, <laughs> a cheat code for life is I, I built a lot of applications before obviously before Nostr. I've been writing open source code since I was 11 years old. And always, every single time, the toughest problem that you need to solve uh, as, a, as a maker, as, a, as an engineer, is getting traction. It, every single time, your product might be the best, absolutely insane, super cool, and it has one user, and it's you. <laughs> and you're there by yourself, sad. Um, with Nostr, you get these <laughs> these network effects for free. You launch an app that integrates with the Nostr protocol, and you already have millions of potential users that are literally just awareness away from trying your thing. They don't have to create an account. They don't have to go through all these hoops where before they did have to go through all these hoops. So you needed to build um, UI and waste time promoting your thing and, and building onboarding experiences to um, make people understand what you're doing. With Nostr, you literally just have an EPO 7 extension. The people can use your application without registering. It takes nothing. It's frictionless. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things that we have going on in, in, in Nostr. And that's why I'm so bullish, because I think this uh, lowering of the barrier to, to the ground, basically, allows us to, to experiment and not not waste time in replicating all these flows uh, and just marketing, marketing, marketing. People can try something. If it's cool, it's just take off. When I, when I left Sublife, I, I literally just posted and went to bed. And the next day, I had like 100,000 uh, hits on the website. I, I just wrote one note. That's it. Oh, yeah, and the other one is, this is sort of like a pet peeve, but no more APIs. I, I don't know if how many of the developers here have had to learn the um, Amazon, AP, like, I don't know, S3 APIs, and then the eBay APIs, and then the Stripe APIs. Like, you have all this knowledge that applies only to this one very specific thing. You're going to get rug pulled in one year when they change version and they deprecate your API. And your life is like this constant suckiness of learning documentation that is irrelevant. We learn one API because at the end of the day, most API is literally just either storing data, fetching data, or transforming data. So other than the transformation, we have the data stored on, on Nostr, there is no more APIs. So to, to me, I, I look forward to the day I don't have to read any more REST or GraphQL or any of that. Oh, and th I think this one is super important. Uh, in protocol payments, I, I think this is absolutely game changer. Um, the first time I built uh, a website that did um, accepted payments, it was before Strike, um, before Stripe, get those two confused. Um, and it was back in the day when you needed PCI compliance. I, I don't know if there's people that had to go through that hill, but PCI compliance, merchant account, go to this bank, go to this other bank. It was literally months and months worth of work, a lot of money to be able to get through these hoops. Then uh, Stripe came and it lowered the barrier. It, turn into something that once you know how to do it, you can do in maybe a couple of days. Then they did Stripe Checkout, which is a bit faster, uh, but still, it's at least hours or, yeah, hours or days worth of work. The first time I integrated payments hey, on one hey. of the uh, micro apps I did, I timed myself, and I did it in less than 15 minutes. I, I didn't know which approach I was going to take. It was literally, check, check. what am I going to hey. do? 
And 15 minutes later, it was live. It's absolutely, now yeah. I can do the same thing, now I, that I know which way to go. I, I can literally add payments in a micro app in less than five minutes. Um, and that's absolutely insane because the fact that we have in protocol payments that are using Bitcoin, that are using Lightning, um, it, it means, that, and, and that now that we have SAPs, uh, it, it means that you can do the payments and the payments are expected to be within the flow. Um, I, I think we have this, this culture already that is permeating Nostar users that willingness to pay. If you were to go to Twitter users or Facebook users and tell them, oh, you need to pay for, stor for storage. You need to pay for to use the, the, the server. No one will pay. And I think in Nostar, 1% of us will pay. And that's a big improvement. Um, oh, yeah. So this is a bit of a, a tangent, but I think micro apps are absolutely fundamental. So I think one of the um, issues that we still have is that uh, there is still a huge risk of centralization in Nostr. One of the vectors of attack that I think are absolutely possible are uh, the super apps. And I think there is a lot of people thinking in terms of super apps. Let's build this app that can do X and Y and Z and can do this and this and this and this. And they integrate absolutely everything. And the issue with that is that, I don't know if you guys remember this, Netscape, the browser wars, yeah? All right, so when you dominate the market enough, you can dictate what the protocol that your market is doing, what it looks like. And we can end up with ActiveX. I don't know if people remember what ActiveX was, but it was a nightmare. Um, and Within Nostr, a very, very popular super app application could dictate, just work off protocol, just don't care about the NIPs, centralize, keep state locally, even off relays, and you capture, the, you capture the users. If you build an app that it becomes very popular and it's doing something that is off of relays, it's doing something that is off of NIPs, um, you, the, the, the rest of the users will think, oh wow, these other apps don't support this thing that I really like. And that's a big, 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 big problem. That's why I think us at this stage in particular where Nostr is so small and it's still, I, the way I see it is Bitcoin 2010 or Bitcoin 2011 where it was still so small that it could be captured. It could be killed relatively easily. Nostr is still at that stage. If we build valuable, super, um, <laughs> valuable micro apps that get in front of this and provide a great functionality, we, we can prevent this kind of capture. To, to me, the, 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 the capturing of the network effects are the, the, um, the most important thing that we need to protect. And Nostr is still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the question was, what are the, the main components that we should work on to, to make sure that these micro apps are able to compete with the super apps? The, the way I see it, micro apps can move really fast and they can experiment and experiment and experiment very, very easily. We could literally have 100 different onboarding micro apps doing onboarding in different ways, and whereas a super app can experiment with one way they, they com what I was talking about before about the complexity in software, they will not be able to, as they grow, they will not be able to move as fast. So I think working in parallel, offering different approaches is the best way. Because it's, it's, very, um, it's very free market, right? Where you just try, it's like evolution, right? You try a bunch of things and maybe a few of them might work or not, but Whereas if you need to try one thing, and that's your thing because you built it in this massive app, I think that's the, that's the, uh, the advantage that we have over, over super apps. But we're still at the stage where there is no super app, but there will be super apps. 
So I, I think it's important for us to get in front of these and not try to compete once a super app has 60% or 30% of the market. So what to build, right? Like, okay, there is demos already, there is a bunch of apps, what to build? Uh, to me, one of the things that uh, attracts me the most is the intersection. I don't know if you guys know about the, this podcast is Bitcoin and uh, where Nanya Business, he does, uh, he explores the intersection of Bitcoin with other stuff. So he usually talks about Bitcoin and permaculture, Bitcoin and schooling, Bitcoin and all these other things, right? I think Noster, the intersection of Noster and something else, it's, it's, it's key. Because when you think about all these communities um, that exist on Facebook, that exist on whatever, on Reddit, or whatever, they all need to conform to this one experience. So the experience needs to be very generic because you're not going to build a Facebook for, so I, I'm, a, I'm doing world schooling with my, with my family. So we travel around with, with kids and we do education sort of in this so we will go to Vietnam, to Thailand, to whatever. There is n no way Facebook can build an experience for world schooling families. So they need to build this tool that is so generic, but adds a little bit of value. And of, of course, they're building on top of the massive network effects that is siloed on, on Facebook. And, and they, can, they can just extract value from that. But really, the experience is, is kind of lame, right? It's, it's the same thing as for skaters or for rock climbers or for whatever you are, right? So for Nostra, we don't have to do that. We can, you can have one experience that is fantastic for world schooling and builds for that particular use case. This is the stuff that I'm the most interested in. Uh, I, I think this is the roundabout way to introduce Nostra. When you pitch to people, Centralized communications, it's, so, it's not a social network, but whatever, right now it is a social network, kind of. Uh, it's a decentralized social network, censorship resistant, no one can ban you. I was like, oh my God, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Who's gonna think about the kids? It's, it's a terrible pitch, no one, no one cares. No one cares about this. Uh, 1%, maybe, if that. Whereas if you build an experience that is better, really better than what they're currently using, they would try it. And you can start building network effects within one community on one specific use case. And they can experience this idea of your data being completely liquid. Your data is not siloed on Facebook. And that data has nothing to do with your data on eBay or Amazon or Reddit or whatever it might be. Your data is everywhere, right? I, I think once they experience that, the value is incredible. But the pitch, which I think it suffers a little bit from the, the Bitcoin angle, there are many Nostr devs, we're also Bitcoin devs, and we pitch Nostr in a little bit the same way. And the pitch for Bitcoin is your, your money's going to hell. I'm from Argentina, so I know. Your money's going to hell, your money's dying, <laughs> you're gonna get wrecked, you know. And it's, it's a pitch for fear, right? It's a pitch for, you should protect yourself because the world is ending. And the, the Nostr pitch is the same. Oh, you're going to get banned. You're going to get banned from Twitter. You're going to get banned from... Most people are not going to get banned. So that's not the pitch. The pitch is this experience is 100x better. At the beginning, it's 100x better. Once we have network effects building upon network effects, it's a million x better. But we first need to build a network effect. So yeah, what to build? Intersections. Uh, the other one is, oh yeah. One thing that I think it's uh, the wrong mindset. I, I, I see it in a lot of people. I certainly had it when I, when I first started doing Nostr stuff. Is this idea of, oh, I need to build, in my case, a Craigslist for Nostr. And you go to Craigslist, you copy the HTML, <laughs> And you just change the storage. Instead of storing in a Craigslist database, you store in a relay. Boom, problem solved. And I think that's totally the wrong idea because Noster has certain properties. Again, back to the data fluidity. Noster has a nature 
that is different from these silos. If you just replicate what we had before, you replicate YouTube, you replicate Reddit, you replicate Twitter, we, we, we're missing kind of the, um, the potential of innovation, right? We're just doing, we're just, yeah, safekeeping our data, and that's fantastic. But there is so much more to be built, to be discovered. Uh, and I don't know, one of the things that, that um, amazes me is the, the second order effects of the, the data being everywhere, where you have the data for YouTube, and you can mesh it in some creative way with the data from our, our Reddit type experience. And I think that unlocks the next level of creativity. It's like sort of like Miniscript. Um, yeah, it's sort of like Miniscript where once you start thinking, oh, I can build this, uh, this Bitcoin script, I can, I can do these other things that I never thought before. And I think the same thing is gonna happen once in a few years, once we have a lot more data and, and we can start seeing the patterns that cross over from one to the next, um, I, I think we're gonna see a lot of really cool things. And I can, I can think of what they are, which I think is kind of the point. And, and then, yeah, of course, build for yourself. Like, build, build what you want to exist. So uh, the way I see it is, I am absolutely sure there are things that will exist. I kind of want them to exist. So for example, Airbnb, for sure is going to happen. Someone will build it. If you're interested, it might as well be you. Uh, <laughs> but I, Sublife, I want it to exist, so I, I built it. Nostri Chat, I wanted a, a chat widget on, on my personal website for some reason. And, um, and I thought, why not? It, it takes very little time. That's what's cool about building on Nostra. It's so, so freaking easy at first. Um, so yeah, just build what picks your interest. Oh, yeah, okay. This one I added like an, an hour ago. So I don't know who, who here has heard um, TFTC, uh, Test from the Crypt, with Parker Lewis. One in the back, one here, one Sharon over there. Okay, and one here. All right, so the, the basic premise is that uh, Parker Lewis was saying that Nostra is a distraction that we have a lot of Bitcoin devs. Uh, I, I'm a Bitcoin dev, JB55 is a Bitcoin dev. There are many, many, many Bitcoin devs. And that we stopped working on Bitcoin stuff to work on Nostr stuff. And that we are dropping the ball, basically. And I think he's completely wrong. And the, way, the, the reason I think that is that he, Nostr, the pitch for Bitcoin is really hard to sell Understanding Bitcoin is really hard, it takes a lot of work. And at the end of the day, if you take a step back and think, what is Bitcoin? It's a technology for freedom. So it's a technology to empower the individual. And Nostr is the same thing. Nostr, I think I have another slide here. Nostr is the, um, is the communication layer that allows trade that happens with Bitcoin that allows that trade to happen organically and to happen in a censorship resistant way. And um, it's already orange peeling. I think I have another slide here. No, I don't. All right. Uh, Nostra is already orange peeling, purple peeling first, and orange peeling people that have seen Bitcoin as this investment, which is 99.9% .9 of people come into Bitcoin thinking, oh, it's a really cool investment, you're gonna be rich. And a lot of people just simply don't care about that pitch. I, I particularly don't find it very interesting. It's, oh, okay. It's like uh, buying, I don't know, Facebook shares, right? And it's not, it's like a completely different thing, but Bitcoin has been thrown in this mix of confusion and the pitch for Nostr can be so much more hopeful and so much simpler to understand. And when you see Bitcoin flowing, when you see the Lightning payments, I've, I've literally shown Sublife to, uh, I, did a, I did a talk two weeks ago in, in Madeira, and there were Bitcoiners there that have been holding Bitcoin for years, and they literally thought that Lightning didn't work yet. And when you sh show them, the payments in real time, and just the payments that are happening in Nostra and that people are announcing on Nostra, 
So it takes them back, so wait, but isn't it like seven transactions per second? Well, actually, no. But, <laughs> but we, can, we, can, we can show them that this is happening right now, and it's insane. So um, back in the Airbnb that I, where I'm staying here, one of the one of our one of my friends, she she got into into Nostr, uh in December. She had never used Bitcoin. She had heard about Bitcoin. She just didn't care. And now she's zapping people all the time, par participating on the zapathons, and she loves it. And now she's going straight into Bitcoin. No 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 shit coins. No nothing. And it's it's obvious, right? Because it's being proven. Right there. It's not this speculation that maybe it will go up in price. No, it's this thing that it has utility right now. And that's very, very powerful. That's why I think Parker's completely wrong on this. Oh, okay, I did have the slide. So that's my friend, <laughs> Roya. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, she got into Bitcoin after Nostar. I think this model will happen so much more. I think Nostar will do the job of orange peeling people 10x, 100x more than all the work, all the companies and all the authors and all the people have done since the beginning of Bitcoin. Nostar is just going to take that and re create a model around that organically. So a couple of keys on, on building stuff. So again, I've been building a lot of things. Um, so I have a few ideas of what um, pitfalls, if you will. First one is just avoid scope creep. Like keep it super, super simple. Build one thing, super, super simple. Build one thing that has some value for someone. Hopefully that someone is you, but that, that, that it has value. Don't try to create from scratch before launching. Create something that is absolutely outstanding. The, the fact that, so for example, Primal, uh, yeah, okay, so Primal uh, came out. I think it has five different tabs. Three of them say coming soon. I, I love that. Do that. Have coming soon or not, don't build, if you're building a Twitter experience, don't build messaging, for example. The fact that there are all these things that it has launched, but it doesn't support them, it's beautiful. That's a really good model from, from my point of view. Talk about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's very uh, engineering specific. Sc scope creep is when you're building something and there are these adjacent features that will make sense. So for example, if you're building a Twitter experience, kind of makes sense to have a profile, to have an account, edit your profile account, edit your profile, add a picture. The, all that stuff is scope creep. If you want to build a Twitter experience, build a feed and publish it. And maybe later, if you feel like it, you can add a few more features. But just keep it to minimum viable product. Keep it to the bare minimum that someone can use and have some value. But because otherwise, it's, it's endless, right? There are so many things that you can build and that is fun to build. Why not? And, and the why not is that if you keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to publish, you will never publish. Maybe, yeah, but just good at one thing. Yeah, people have been asking me to add the ability to sap people from, from sap life. Um, I mean, maybe, but you're gonna raise up from like so many clients. Like, why, why, would, I, why would I do it? <laughs> How about I, I want to build other stuff, you know? Um, oh yeah, and this one I think is super important. Seek, seek the discomfort. If you're not embarrassed by what you're launching, you you waited too long. <laughs> I I had um, a post-it on my uh, on my screen for a long time that said something like uh, do something that makes you feel stupid or something like that. Just just launch it. I Nostri Chat, which is kind kind niche popular, Nostri, the chat widget that I, that I wrote, still to this day has lorem ipsum text <laughs> on on the website. So people tell me, oh, did you have? Yeah, I know. It's stupid, but whatever. You know, like you can use this thing anyway. If you like send a PR. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if people 
remember this scene in Matrix uh, where the Oracle is telling Neo, I, I have the actual code, quote, I'm sorry, kid, you got the gift, but it seems you're waiting for something. And I, I think it's super cool because there are so many people, I, I've spoken with a lot of people that have these crazy ideas and they're writing specs and I'm going to build this and it's going to do this other thing. And don't ask if, just, just go and do it. <laughs> I, when you get in the mindset of, I'm, I'm going to see if people want it, and, and th there's a place for that when, you, um, when moving is very expensive, but moving in Nostr is extremely cheap, extremely, because you already have users. So don't just ask, don't just throw, just do it. Spend, the investment is spending maybe four hours figuring out the tooling, having a framework to run stuff, and then you can iterate on different approaches for different micro apps in hours. Literally. I'm, I'm, last night I started building something that I expect to be ready um, but before the end of the conference. And I expect to be busy during the conference, but it sh once you know how to do it, you should be able to do it very, very, very fast. So believe in yourself. <laughs> okay, this is the, <laughs> now I'm going to make the opposite argument. Beware of complexity. Um, Noster takes the, um, the, um, the difficulty of creating things and shoves it on the, on the client. So relays are supposed to be st silly, stupid, and clients are, are the ones supposed to do the signature checking, clients are supposed to be doing sorting in whatever way you want. So there's a lot of complexity hidden in implementation of a client. The, uh, the more futureful you want your client to be, the higher the complexity, the higher the complexity. So it's something to keep in mind, there are a lot of gotchas when you start digging. So for example, relays, they will not always give you the data that you want. They will some, like you can do the exact same query a couple of times. Sometimes you will get different things. Um, they will not, al again, it's st still quite early. Maybe this will change, um, but there, there are relays where you ask them to give you a thousand events of whatever query you give them and they give you less even though they have more. So there are a lot of quirks um, once you start really digging into it. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, Fiat Chef says there are no guarantees in using Nostr. I think that's a good rule of thumb. There is no consensus in Nostr, so the lack of consensus means that Hey, a relay will do whatever the hell it, heck it wants because it doesn't have to keep consensus with the other relays. It's a good thing, but it has its, its downsides and as a, as a developer, you need to be aware of, the, of those uh, downsides. Uh, this, one is <laughs> this one is one for um, signature validation. Relays don't do signature, well, most relays don't do signature validation. So anyone can forge whatever they want. If, if you want to, and you probably should, if you build a client, you, you might want to do signature validation. It's expensive, uh, CPU-wise, it's expensive. So it's a trade-off that you have to do. Um, so it's something to be aware of because people think, oh, ah, I created this relay and it gave you me this data and maybe it's bullshit. SAPs, for example, SAPs are, <laughs> SAPs are you cannot trust that a SAP is, is real. Uh, ben de Carmen has been doing like 21 million SAPs and stuff like that. It, it appears that it's valid, signature checks. It's just the, uh, the, the lightning payment never happened, obviously. But so it's something to be aware of because people are very taken aback by it. Oh, and this one, I, I think this one is the, the biggest hurdle. It's very easy to uh, it's very easy to build uh, a client at first. Once you you start trying to be a bit smarter on how you write, and right now there's only arguably one client that is doing a, a good job and it's gossip um, that is it's doing a, a good job doing this this work. 
most clients, they will just write everywhere, read from the release that you've, that you've um, um, configured, and that's it. Which is why so many times you go see a thread and there is the response, you have no idea, there is no response, or the events are missing, <laughs> the follow list, obviously you follow list and every time you get a different result. You have one million followers, you have five. It's, a, you know, it's the, the, re the, the way to talk to the relays, it's still extremely early stage and there is a lot of complexity to do it right. All good. So, um, if you want to build something that has um, <laughs> that is works properly, you need to understand that the f most clients, the way they work, they are extremely naive. So, if you want to build it well, just beware and don't be naive. Um, and what, when I say naive, is don't expect relays to not give you bullshit to give you everything they have. To, um, to, to store everything you send them, there, there, are, there are gotchas. Don't be abusive. Um, I, I, there is, uh, who here knows the Bluster Relay? All right, okay, a couple of hands. Ah. So the Bluster ah. Relay is uh, something that, that Tony wrote, which you configure it as a, as a write relay, and it will blast as its name implies, it will blast your events everywhere, everywhere. When I, when I said that, I thought it was a joke, uh, <laughs> but it's not. The, the, uh, the cost of doing that for the user is nothing, is you just write to one relay. The, the, the externality that it has is terrible because every relay getting every event is extremely expensive, so once enough people use this, running a relay becomes very expensive. And what happens when we get this supposedly distributed, decentralized uh, mm, infrastructure uh, becoming more and more expensive, less people run it, centralization, right? You become a bsb -er. um, And I understand, I, I actually host one, I, I think there are two Blaster instances, I host one of them because I wanted to see how many people are using them. And it's, there, there, there is a large incentive to do it, but we need, to be, we need to be mindful that we can remove that incentive. If you want your notes to be seen, I saw that this morning, if you want your notes to be seen, you will use uh, Bluster. If clients were not naive, if clients knew where to go get your notes or where to go get a note that you are replying to, there will be no incentive, kind of, to, to uh, use Bluster. I, I think we'll get there. There is a lot of work that, that we're doing to, to make this happen. But this is stuff that I think is important to be aware of. Um, ultimately, yeah, this is still hard. Uh, ultimately, I think, um, oh shit, I crushed, all right. Ultimately, I think the, um, the, the libraries that clients use to, to build this stuff are going to automate that for, I, I've, I've been working on, on an NDK, uh, like Nostro Development Kit with, with NDK. Um, and the, the idea is that you will have very simple primitives and the, the library will take care of all this stuff for you. So you say, I want to publish this event, it's tagging this puff key or it's even tagging this hashtag. It will figure out where to write it based on what it has observed from the network. I think that's a much better model. It allows us to spread out. Before getting, um, Using Noster, I was very interested in slash tags. Who, who knows what slash tag is, is here? Okay, key, okay, just a yeah, handful of people, obviously. Uh, <laughs> so, so slash tag is a, it's a, um, a, a, an extremely decentralized way of doing uh, communications. Uh, that synonym is spearheading. Uh, it's been in the works for probably like, arguably four years, more if you include 
what hyper, hyper cores. And the idea is that every single client is also what we would call a relay. Uh, and it's, it's perfectly spread out, but it has uh, a, a lot of costs, a lot of complexity. Writing code for, for slash tags is very hard, very, very, very hard. Debugging is super hard, whereas in Nostr it's extremely easy. And, but if we go with um, what's now is called the gossip protocol or these kind of um, directions, we can very easily decentralize more. We don't need to get to the point where every single person is running the equivalent of a relay. We, we can have a few, a few relays for topic, like talking about Nostrica, for example, or I, I'm setting up a relay for, for Madeira. So when people go to Madeira, they can just use that relay and see what's going on in the island. And you leave and you take it off. But these topic-based relays or person-based relay, so a relay for these few puffkeys, for my family, for example. Um, I, I think this is the way we need to go. And having this kind of functionality by default, so that clients, when they're implementing this, they don't have to think about it, I, I think this is the way that allows us to keep decentralization, because otherwise we're gonna completely centralize. So yeah, uh, NK. And if you build it, they will come. Uh, just build whatever, whatever you want to build, build whatever it's fun for you. If people find use uh, for, and st especially at this stage, this stage is beautiful because people want to try new things. So there is a, there is a lot of demand for innovative ideas, for new ways of doing things. So just Explore, explore, because once you have a framework on how to do it, launching different things becomes extremely easy, and you can do whatever the hell. You can spend a few hours building a completely different experience for whatever you're interested in, and if people find use, they will use it. If not, you move on, or you use it, and you don't care. All right, that's the end of my, oh yeah, questions? All right, thank you guys. All right, folks, uh, we're going to take a little break at workshop stage. Um, if you're tweeting out, no, we don't say that here, do we? If you're sending events out onto the relays, uh, just let them know this is the jungle. We're working on a lot of the tech stuff as we go. Thank you very much, Paula, for your uh, incredible job as we, uh, coming off the top is, is tough, uh, you know for the tech side and also for the presenters. So uh, were there to be any questions? If there were, uh, we would, would you be okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, why don't we do that? We've got a mic and folks, um, just because of the live webcast, it's uh, much easier if you, you talk into the mic. This uh, ambient one that we've got isn't picking you up well enough. If you're, if you're shy, not a problem, we can repeat the question. But if you do wanna talk in the mic, we have a runner for that. Thanks. All right, so what, in your opinion, what's the best way to start? What's the easiest way to start learning? For, I, I would start with maybe just um, use Nostr tools is, is, a, is a good way to go. I, I can give people access to the NDK. I, I haven't released it yet because I, want to, I don't want to solidify on the API that I have. Um, but I can give access to, to that. But, or, or just use Nostr tools. And just build whatever, you, like maybe just fetch an event. And that's it. Like literally just fetch an event and show it on the console or the browser or Android, whatever you, whatever platform you want to use. But that's the, it, it's probably going to take you maybe between five minutes and one hour to, to do it. Once you do it, next time it's going to take you one minute. That's, that's the bare minimum. Fetching events is, is like, just making the uh, WebSocket connection and then seeing what Yeah, yeah, works. yeah. So for example, with Nostr Tools, it's really it's simply calling Relay in it. You say the Relay, and you say, um, well, Relay Connect, and Relay, I don't remember. But yeah, it, it's literally three lines of code. <laughs> it's just pass, just pass an event ID, and that's it. But yeah, just 
do it super simple and then maybe think what you want to build. Um, maybe, maybe you want to build something, I don't know, DMs for example. I, we, we don't have something to do DMs properly. We are, we're still doing DMs on, 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 on demos and on these apps. I think that's not going to be the case. I, I hope demos end up ripping out because of market reasons, it end up ripping out the DM functionality. Having, having an, an app that is only doing DMs, it's obviously, obviously how it's going to work. Uh, but no one has built it yet. There, there are a few things being built that look very promising, but there will be hundreds of these, uh, of these apps, so build one. <laughs> Hello, um, it's quite a specific question, but I think that um, it can apply to everyone. So what is your take on companies here in Nostra and other uh, possible protocols trying to build on top and getting reach into the community to either use their product or like just um, get more visibility into the protocol itself? Uh, I think it's great, it's a great question. I think it's fantastic. I really want companies to, to use uh, Nostr. I, I think they will, eventually. I think the companies, I, I, I'm not gonna name names, but the companies that are have a, a Nostr strategy, they are doing it completely backwards and you might as well just not do it. There are some companies doing this and I think it's a, a horrible mistake. But, I mean, it's the market, do whatever you want. But I, I, I think it's super important. It's something that, unless we fail, it's something that will happen. So, yeah, it's great, fantastic. We still have a lot of problems for real companies to, to use Nostr. Um, well, I think we're gonna do a talk with uh, Rockstar and a few others about some of the, of the issues because there are technical issues. Um, there's still a lot of things to figure out. For, for companies, I, I don't think they can, they can really, um, from, from a social media manager standpoint, I don't think Nostr is there yet. I, I, I happen to have met uh, a friend of mine uh, well, who, who now is a friend of mine from, from Exodus Wallet. Uh, boo, right? Okay. <laughs> and, and, but she's a real Bitcoiner. She really understands it. Uh, she, she gets her salary in, in Bitcoin. And, and Nostr for that use case, she started using Nostr personally, but from, a, from a, a company perspective, we're still not there. But man, companies building on Nostr is fantastic. I think it's very, 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 very important. Fast? Oh, good. Is Nostr faster than Bitcoin Lightning? What do you mean? <laughs> like at sending data peer to peer, if I were to send data to a friend, would that be faster through a Nostr micro app or through Bitcoin? Yes. Lightning? Yes, the answer is extremely yes. <laughs> Mainly because Bitcoin and Lightning are not, the, I mean, yes, they are kind of communication layers. Very, if you, if you take like 10 steps back and think very abstractly, yeah, yes, but, but for communications, use Nostra or use something else. Don't, I mean, use Bitcoin if you want, right? <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Definitely don't use Lightning because it's gonna be slow, very slow unless you do out of band things, which you're not using lightning in that case. Like, but, um, but yeah, no, if you want to do communications, use a communications protocol. No story is that. Lightning, it's, you know, I, I can pick up a, a rock here and write a message and put it over an ant and send it to you. It's, it's not a communications protocol, the ant, right? Um, so yeah, as a communication protocol, yes, no story is way, 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 way faster Thanks. and cheaper. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Uh, what are the technical difficulties that you say is right now that we need to fix right now to start to the people or normal devs start to work with that? For example, is a database already on relays or that's something that we need to start to create is very infancy, things like that. 
Yeah, so so relays it depends the the, the um, the difficulties that really have with regards to database are extremely domain specific. If you have expertise, deep expertise in that area, definitely contribute there. For most devs that don't have that type of extremely niche domain specific expertise, there is a lot of work that needs to be done on, on, the, on the tool set. That's why I start, I'm, I'm doing the, the NDK thing because I, I think it's absolutely essential that we give uh, a well-behaved, smart uh, library for, for developers to not have to worry about all this bullshit um, that every single app has to, has to do, or work in the most, um, again, naive way. I think the tool set can evolve a lot, but we are already at the stage where you can experiment and, and you can do a lot of things. But yeah, if you have expertise in, in, in certain areas, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. So uh, I have a question about uh, micro apps. Uh, so when, when I think of micro apps, uh, what comes to mind is WeChat. I don't know if people are familiar with it, but it's like- WeChat? A WeChat. As a micro app? Well, it, it, it's like an app that has a lot of functionalities that you can yeah. you can implement uh, through installing like a micro app inside the, the, the main app, which is obviously a, a, a point of centralization. Uh, what, what, what yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so th the way I'll see Super Chat and um, um, WeChat is a super app. is is the opposite of a, of a micro app. It's an, an app that does chat, payments, um, whatever else it does. Um, um, it, it's an app that tries to capture every single possible use case yeah. and capture the um, capture the user. So at the beginning of the talk, I. I was talking precisely about this, about the importance of building a lot of micro apps as early as possible to prevent a super app from capturing um, from from capturing network effects. Because uh, my my point was that super apps are able to command the design of the protocol. They can just go off protocol because they have a, a large uh, amount of of users. So they can once you want to leave. Uh, a super cha a super a super app you are you, you notice that all the other apps lack functionality because the super app has built stuff that is not compatible with 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 Nostr. Yeah. so yeah yeah for, for me it's uh, extremely important as a way working on micro apps is extremely important as a way of fighting about um, against this risk of centralization yeah so my, my follow-up question to that is like the the, the distribution mechanism of Micro apps. Um, how do we distribute them in a decentralized manner, but still leveraging the the st still leveraging the network effects of of Noster? Yeah. So the um, micro apps. So the cool thing is that in, in in Noster, you're you're talking to the relays. So you can run. So for example, I, I Snort. I know that now is in the Umbral store, which is uh, it's a, it's good in a way. Um, but you can run all these apps locally, right? Um, so the, um, the the distribution mechanism is not it's not problematic, really, because so for example, uh, there's Snort Social, but then I have an instance on Snort uh, F7Z, because which is my my domain. Uh, then uh, someone else, Semisol has an instance as well. So really, you don't need one Snort instance per person. But the fact that you can, and it's, I mean, for a developer, it's super easy to, to spin out some, something like that. Or like, you literally clone the repo, and you NPMI, and that's it. Um, so so I, I don't think the distribution is, is, is an issue. The, the thing that I think is an issue is that if we take time to, to build these functionalities within the, the context of micro apps, if uh, a super app comes and starts bringing these things, um, getting people to go and try something different is going to be hard. So I think we're still at the stage where we can get ahead of that problem, but I think that's going to be a problem. Just to, to preempt that. You know, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. 
uh, I can see what what happens is like a WeChat over Noster, where it's just super convenient for everyone to download WeChat for Noster and access all the micro apps through that. Whereas um, it's a lot more work for people to go and search for a micro app that they want to use, uh, where I there's no centralized app store or whatever. And yeah, absolutely. I, I think one of the cool things that um, culture has momentum by itself. So for example, in Nostra, we already kind of have, <laughs> in, the next, in the past month, we have the culture of, of paying for things. And you keep that going, you normalize that, and it's not weird when an application asks you to pay for something. Whereas if Twitter today, um, starting, you have to pay to, to use this or to use, or to, to, I know they have payments, but I don't think it's for creating money. I think it's a way, well, okay, no, never mind. But if, if Twitter or Facebook are going to go in that route, it, it's so against the momentum that they've established for the past decade that it's, it's absolutely shocking. And we, we've seen that even when Twitter rolled out the, the Twitter Blue thing, that even very important accounts, the blue checks, they were like, oh my God, $8. Uh, because, because it's an $8, it's nothing for, for these people. So, so, but it goes against what they have experienced. The fact that we have this momentum with micro apps, when we normalize that the experience of using Noster is mainly via these micro apps, it's not weird when you have to go off this WeChat platform or x.com or whatever it might be. Um, but that's the work that we need to do. And we are still at the stage where we can do that work. In one year, this work will be harder. So that's why it's so important to do it now. My question is regarding uh, micro apps that we could uh, build towards um, other use cases than social media, let's say. Uh, so my question is, I, I see two approaches to doing that, uh, trying to get this new use case and um, making it attached to the current types of messages that exist in the Nostra network, mm -hmm. or creating new stand, uh, event types of events for these new use cases. Which would be like the good way of starting this because I'm seeing that if I am trying to do, let's say, the GitHub project, I will try, uh, I start to do some standardization into some things that I don't really know how it will grow in that uh, spectrum. I'm trying to standardize something that it's really niche right now. What would be the approach here? Definitely go for just YOLO <laughs> into your own kind. Come up with it. Uh, Jeff and I were doing a project right now and I just, Picked out of, I just picked out a number for a kind, and it's lit. Uh, it's a 1337. Just see if there are people, other people using it, and if not, use it. You can propose the NIP later, it's fine. <laughs> and another thing that I would recommend if you do that, and I do think that you should do that, is and depending on what you're doing, if, if you're coming up with your own kind, uh, which, so events have a, a kind, which is a number that identifies what it is. So for example, uh, the typical um, note that we see on, on demos and these apps is kind one, and your profile data is kind zero, and uh, SAP is 9375. So if you come up with your kind, you are going to be the only app using that kind by definition, right? So you might as well set up a relay make your application right to that relay, allow other people to, to set up. So all, all the apps that I build have a, a small um, gear uh, icon and you can tap it and you can add more relays. You cannot remove them because I didn't write it yet, but, but you, you get the idea. <laughs> um, just write to your relay so that you are not, you know, abusing or dumping stuff that other relays are like, what the hell is this? Write it to your relay People can try it. If it makes sense, you can start working with other people. Um, you can put a NIP together. You can just discuss it over, over Noster, see what people think, and you can get a NIP going. But I don't think we should first write the NIP, get it merged, because there's a lot of bike shedding in writing NIPs. 
Yes, a lot. So so sometimes not, but sometimes yes. Uh, there is a lot of extra work that you need to do if you go this route. Whereas, just write the app, just write to your relay, see if it works, see if people use it, see what you understand, what you learn. The the first um, the Craigslist thing I wrote, it literally was just writing uh, a JSON on the content of the event. And then I noticed that I couldn't query uh, because it wasn't in tags, but I don't know, it was the first thing I wrote. I said, I don't know, good idea, why not? Um, so you, you will also learn on you know, the nature of your, your domain-specific problem. Uh, but yeah, just come up with kind and just dump it there. See what happens. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> Yeah, let's have a big hand for Paulo. So before you get away, folks, what we wanted to uh, just, this is an unconference, right? So uh, the workshop stage, if you're looking at the schedule and you notice there are blocks that are open, that doesn't mean nothing is happening here. There could be a discussion that's taking place. 